Don't stop drawing game devs. A Tony Chan here, and welcome to episode 59 of Game Dev Loadout, where I chat with the best people in our industry to learn how they got started, the obstacles they face, and the tools they use to reach success. Make sure to stay updated with new episodes every week by subscribing. Now, let's chat with today's future guest, Fred Hooper. Fred, it is a game time. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm all set. Let's do this. Let's do this. He has been in the artist in the video game industry, making effects in real time art for over 15 years. He is the founder of Gentleman's Fred FX, creating effect assets for Unreal Marketplace. He has worked on several games, including Just Cause 3, where he made mini explosion. And now he's the lead visual effect artist at NVIDIA. So go ahead, Fred. Give us a bit about your personal life and how you got started in the game industry. Um, okay, so way back, uh, I used to do pen and paper games, um, like RPGs for FASA, a corporation in Chicago. And I wanted to kind of make a change, and I thought video games were pretty cool. So I thought, hey, let us uh, let me see if I can try to get a job with this. So, Because I already had kind of a digital portfolio. Uh, so I started sending out, and I started working at Raven Software as uh, an environment artist. And then after a while, then when I got there, it was like, I kind of was looking into different things I could do in games. So uh, I found, you know, I, I was looking, I was like, oh, effects look pretty cool. Let's try that. And it was sort of a, not a new thing when I started, but it was like one of those things where it was like uh, very interesting just because it was a little bit of tech and a little bit of art like mixed together. Uh, and it really kind of helps with sort of the game experience. So that's uh, about a year maybe after I started Raven, I started doing off and on, I started doing effects work and like, uh, pretty much anything I could get my hands on. So like, tell us something we probably don't know about visual effects that we should. Oh, okay. Uh, it seems like everybody has a different definition of what that is. Uh, and so um, when like a visual effects artist is uh, just, I'll start basic and then I'll go, go crazy. Um, <laughs> so uh, a visual effects artist is like someone who just, uh, they're, they're there to kind of like make, uh, make like your explosions and, uh, th- that's the fun stuff, like your explosions, your weapons, your, your things that explode and go boom. Uh, but then they're also there to kind of enhance sort of, uh, environments so that you can, so that like, a so an environment artist will come in and they'll say, Hey, I'm going to make this beautiful environment. But then there's something, there's always something kind of missing. So, you know, then an effects artist will come in and say, okay, well, let's, let's do a little bit of like, let's help, let's help the lighting and let's do like, you know, some God rays or let's do some, some air dust or some falling leaves or something to give the, 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 the scene a little bit of life. And, uh, or, or it could be like, Hey, I need to, I need to blow up a, a bridge and I need to figure out how to, you know, make this fall apart uh, and in real time and like make sure that if somebody, you know, shoots it here, it breaks in the right way versus, you know, like something that's in a cinematic. So, or it's like, Hey, I need to do, I need to, you know, do something like effects wise in a cinematic where it's like, you know, I want to, I want to set up, you know, a, a, a power up for a, I'm basically doing a, a character intro and he does a big power up and then he does like a, a, a pose, you know, it's like, okay, well then put effects in that too. And then it, depending on where you go, it kind of the, the job position title changes. Uh, so like, um, like for when I was at Avalanche, it was like, uh, for Just Cause, it was like, you know, destruction mainly and uh, all the effects work that was there, uh, like the you know, guns and flying through the air and vehicles and all that stuff. Whereas like, you know, in another place, it could be, you know, like, okay, I need to simulate cloth and I need to, you know, simulate hair and as well as blow stuff up and drop, you know, uh, break, break everything, you know? So, um, it just depends on where you go. Whereas another place it could be, you know, you're just doing like a straight environment work and you're, you know, like setting up, you know, like, like I said before, like your dust and your God rays and things like that. Or it could be like, you know, Hey, I'm a V I'm a VR effects artist and it's a completely different can of worms, you know? So it just basically just changes based on where you go. Gotcha. Gotcha. I guess you could say like, it makes the game more appealing like I, I just played a bit of a horizon and wow, that game is beautiful with like tons of different effects going on at once. Yeah. That, play, that, that game is gorgeous. It's so, it's so cool. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean like uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's meant to kind of enhance or to uh, inform like gameplay. Um, so like if you have a, uh, like in, um, if you use horizon as the example, you've got like, you know, you got your exploding arrows versus like your regular arrows and you know, like uh, how they hit and how hard they hit. You know, it kind of has to be visual, visually has to be conveyed back 
from from like your your effect. So like uh, like let's say you you have like a a character with like like a three stage power up. Like each one of those effects has to look different so that you can without without looking at like your UI or without looking at it, but basically like by feel you know that you're hitting harder. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's it's for like direct it's like for direct feedback, you know, from like the game to to the visual. Uh, what do you think? Uh, what mistakes are like most common, even at a pro level, when creating visual effects? Oh man, I don't even know where to start. Uh, so <laughs> uh, I think I think like um, a lot of the common mistakes that people make are for is is mainly timing because uh, there is a little bit of animation in it too. Actually, there's a lot of animation in effects too. So uh, it's like uh, I'd say the first thing is timing, and the second thing is like maybe not. It's it's really it's really like situational. So like if you're if you've got uh, if you have like an animation of a guy or of a character doing you know say um, a magic spell and you know it's a very let let's say like you're looking at the animation it's very like uh, soft and fluid looking and then all of a sudden you make this big huge crashing sort of effect on top of it it kind of disconnects you from that. So I'd say like you know marrying the Marrying the effect to like your motion mm. is 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 one of the things that, that I see. One of the things that I that I see is um like maybe with ex- with explosions in particular, uh, rhythm is sort of like all at the front. So like if uh, instead of it being a, I'm going to use my my super technical terms instead of like a boosh, you know, or like a badoom, it's like just a, it's just a bit like a foosh where it's just <laughs> all it's all it's all at the front end uh, instead of like like because uh, a lot of effects have rhythm. Where it's like a three-stage rhythm, where it's like uh, if you look at like a film where you know somebody blows up like a gas station or something, it's usually like a, a, a initial explosion, a secondary, and then a, a third. So it's like bada boom <laughs> versus like uh, badoom versus boosh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't know how else to say it. Uh, but uh, but a lot of a lot of the explosions that I'll see, um, like I, I I occasionally uh, speak with students, and I see a lot of a lot of the a lot of the explosion stuff is sort of like all at, all at the beginning where it's like sometimes you need to kind of build up and use use basically animation principles to kind of like make sure that you're making something with a, a little more more character and uh, and a lot of it is just like getting past the initial excitement of making it you know because like making an explosion is really fun so uh, I can imagine know, getting, <laughs> yeah getting getting past the initial excitement of it and then like stepping back and saying okay let's be a little bit more critical about what I'm doing here because like making like because a lot goes into it so I can I so I, I, does that answer your question? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you're you're saying like uh I guess beginners or or people are like they just go straight to the explosion instead of like adding little subtle details building up to the explosion. Right. And and uh, even if even if we were talking about like um it's about like sort of character uh and turning making something that isn't a character or have character, if that makes any sense. Like uh, so so like if um like uh, when when I worked on Just Cause, it was like make make a. I, I pitched this idea, and my uh, lead designer was like, "You're crazy." And I was like, "No, no, we can do this." I'm like, "Let's let's make all the explosions have, have like let's treat them as if they were like had a character to them." Where, where instead of it being just like, "Hey, I'm making an explosion," it's like I want to make explosions that are ridiculous. You know, I want to make them like kind of so over the top and so absurd that like you can't help but pay attention. Uh, and so a lot of it turned into. A lot of it was scale. I mean, I got lucky where like scale was a big thing, but a lot of it also came into like making sure that the timing of it was um, procedural, and also it tied into sort of like how uh, how the player actually like blew like destroyed something would actually turn back that back into how the explosion behaved. So it was like a lot of action reaction, and I guess that's like the second thing: timing, and then like sort of the action reaction has to like make sense. Interesting. So overall, what are your key principles for better uh, video game visual arts? Oh man, it, it comes down to like, I, 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 in my opinion, I think it, it comes down to sort of like what the yeah, it has to kind of marry with the aesthetic of the game. It, you can't like have like a, you can't have like a, at the very beginning, it's like you can't. You have to look at what the game style is, and then you have to kind of like make sure that you're you're working towards that same style. Like you can't put a, I mean, you can do this, but I mean you. It, if you have like a super stylized game, like say like Persona Five or something, and then you put like realistic effects in there, it's it's not going to work. You know, you have to you have to kind of make sure that you're paying attention to what 
the aesthetic of the game is and then say, okay, well, let's, let's make sure that everything is working visually the same way. And that's, you know, that's our, that's a, uh, sorry, discussions you can have with your art director. Uh, whereas if you're doing like, you know, a, a super realistic game, you may, you know, you can't really, you can put stylized effects in super realistic games, but visually they have to be, they have to kind of make sure you have to make sure that they look uh, realistic you know, like that, but they don't need to necessarily behave realistically, but they definitely need to like sort of work together. And then it all comes down to what, like how you want to, you know, build those effects and how you want to, you know, put those in that game. I got you. It's like, yeah, you, you can't, the explosions or visual effects cannot look out of place in that world. Mm-mm. Yeah. And it's just going to take the players out of it. And now let's, let's take this on a more personal level. And you've been in the game industry for a while now. What was the worst moment of your career? That one moment that's still vivid in your mind. You know, be very detailed and tell us that personal story. Oh man. Uh, okay. Um, so <laughs> I'm not going to name any names here, but I will. <laughs> well, no, it's, it's, it's damning. So it's like, I don't want to do that, but, yeah. um, and on a, on, a, on a certain project, there was I was uh, filling multiple roles on on the same project, uh, and uh, there's a lot of uh, basically it was like one of those I'm spending a lot of time here, you know it's like and uh, kind of making sure everybody was working and everything was working well and making effects and all that stuff. And then I I woke up <laughs> and I realized that I had been in the office for like three days. Oh man! And I was just like, oh man, I'm. I'm I'm sleeping at my desk. What is going on here? You know, and so the it's like one of those things where like you know you, the per, my my whole like uh, the whole like personal life against like you know <laughs> like kind of not re- not realizing that I'm working like this crazy you know sort of thing. So you know the the whole like the whole thing of like sleeping at sleeping at your desk. I'm like oh I'll never do that. I'm never going to be that guy. <laughs> and and then all of a sudden I was that guy. I'm like oh my god, what have I become? You know, sort of thing. <laughs> so anyway. That's not that horrible, but I mean, it's 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 definitely something that happened. So, like, what what happened? Like, you you were burnt out, or uh, I guess no, it no, was I during think, crunch time or something. Yeah, it was like it was like in a crunch moment, and I just was kind of like I, I was just like in the zone, and I wasn't even paying attention to what was going on. And then next thing next thing I know, I'm like asleep, and I'm like, what the heck happened? You know, sort of thing. And I'm like, oh, what day is it? And I'm like, oh my god, you know. So it was like uh, it was just one of those things where I'm like, I need to leave. I need to go. I need to go get a sandwich or something. This is crazy, you know. So, and then that was like, you know, and of course, like you know, when you're when you're in like a crunch situation, everybody's kind of working towards this thing, and you're all kind of stressed out, and there's like, you know, a lot of emotions. So, you know, that's a difference. That's another story, but I won't tell that one. So, so. Oh, what what can you tell us, game devs, in order to avoid? Because you know, of course, that's that could be unhealthy, but you know, just you, you don't even notice <laughs> that, that you're walking the next morning, you know, still at work. Like, like, what do you want to make sure game does take away from that experience? You know, so they don't, I guess, zone out. Maybe that that could be maybe unhealthy sometimes or bad for them. I think I think that there's uh, and that's a, that's like a that's a little story. I mean, you know, but I mean, honestly, I think that it's like I, I'm I, I'm lucky. Like after I got out of uh, after I left I, after I came to New York, I, I started working with. Um, Chaos uh, before they THQ before they got closed, and then Avalanche, and then. And previously that was like Raven. Then I worked at, like I said, in other places. But it's like the further that I got along in my career, the more that like the studios, like Avalanche was the kind of the first two that was like, look, we really care about your your work life balance. I was like, sure you do. <laughs> and so, of course, yeah. And they really, they really do. They really want you to kind of have have that sort of um, balance between like you know working really hard and you know having a life. And that that was sort of a big eye opener for me because. Um, after I got out of school, all I did was like kind of I was in a, a cycle of crunch, uh, like long hours crunch, long hours crunch, and it was just you know, and you don't and, and honestly you just don't notice it because you're trying so hard to like like I wanted so hard to be in, in game dev. I'm like oh I'm gonna do anything to do this, and and so you're kind of working really hard towards that. So so the things that you can do is like maybe there's a few things that you can do. It's and it comes down to just setting up boundaries uh, and just making sure that you know. You don't put yourself in the position where you're always kind of in a state of crisis. <laughs> uh, I mean, like, because that's kind of where that's that's kind of where I live in a lot of ways. It's like I'm always kind of working towards something. So, like, uh, but but lately, uh, later, I was just like, look, I just uh, after I after I worked at Avalanche, I'm like, this is much better for me, <laughs> you know. So uh, I'd say, like, just be, 
you know, make sure that you have things that you can do that are like, you know, even if it's like for an hour, like if you, you know, go work out or something or just, you know, just do something that you can like, uh, release the, the pressure valve in your body. Cause eventually you're, you're, the, all the, all of that work is going to catch up and then you're just going to, you're just going to crash. At least that's what I, at least that's what I think. I, I'm sure that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sure I could have long arguments with some of my coworkers about this. So <laughs> is that what happened to you? Like, what was the effects that happened to you? Oh no. I mean, after, after this happened, I was just like, okay, I need to, I need to change some things. So, you know, I, I basically started, you know, getting like, I basically started working out and just making sure that I had something that I could like, just, you know, release the pressure, the, the valve, the, the sort of like stress valve in my body. Cause, uh, and, and it was, it really helped. Cause like after, after like about, I know it sounds like a long time after about like a month, I was like much happier at work and I just was like, okay, I can, I can do this now. And <laughs> I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like, you know, yell at anybody. This is going to be great. You know? So you're just like that, 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 you know? So, uh, <laughs> and I've been, you know, I mean, maybe it wasn't that, that cheerful, but I mean, <laughs> it definitely, there definitely was a sort of a shift in, in like sort of, uh, like my, my mentality after I started to, step away a little bit from the actual work and like make sure that I kind of took care of myself a little bit. Yeah, man. Yeah. Definitely got to take care of your body, take that break, you know, take a nap or something, or like you say, go exercise, which is good for your physical health. I'm curious yeah. at, at, uh, did your coworkers actually say anything or like tell you, Hey, you got to go home man. you've been here too long. No, I, that actually, that happened at Avalanche. I, uh, the first, the first week I was at Avalanche, I was in Stockholm with the, um, I was basically learning the new system with uh, with the guys that that were there, and I was just you know, and, and my normal mode up to that point was learn something new, just stay stay there until you figure it out, you know, like or or like stay there until you're like you know kind of scratchy and bad, and then you just leave, and then you come back and you do it again. And uh, I was there for, I mean, I wasn't even there for ten hours. I was just kind of like you know looking at the system and seeing how it worked and trying to figure out all the sort of ins and outs of sort of a proprietary sort of effect system. And, uh, this, uh, one of the producers came up to me, she's like, Hey, how you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm doing great. She's like, uh, how long have you been here? I was like, Oh, I got here, you know, early cause I'm an early person. So, and then she said, um, you need to go home. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. What? She's like, here you go. I'm like, yeah, you're, that's funny. You know, like, and I just kind of did a, you know, like a, Hey, that's hilarious. You know? And then I just kept working. <laughs> she's like, no, I need you sharp tomorrow. So just go home, get some rest. I was like, are you serious? And she's like, Oh yeah, I'm totally serious. I'm like, okay. I'm going to go now. I'm leaving. You sure I can go? Okay. You know, that sort of thing. So, I mean, I've had, I've had people, I mean, when you're when you're in the middle of like a huge crunch, like everybody's doing that, so it's like no one's gonna say, "Hey, let's go home," you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, I've actually told people to go home before at work. I'm like, you need to leave now. You you, you really need to go because because <laughs> you're you're not you're not functioning very well right now. So you need just to leave, you know? Um, I uh, when I I hired some people and I just said, look, it's like if you're at the point where you can't think, I don't need you. Just go home. Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, I have, I've had people tell me this and it was just, and every time I just treat it with suspicion, cause I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, sort of thing. So, but if someone actually tells you that and like, you know, they, they seem earnest, I'd say, take that advice and leave. Yeah, <laughs> so. That's part of the reason why they're telling you, you know, you, you, to, you to go home and take a break. <laughs> uh, yeah, totally. What do you think is like the worst advice do you see or hear being told in your world? Like what, what is like other game does give giving out bad advice? I mean, I don't know. I, I haven't worked at a place that's been toxic for a, for a long time. Mm-hmm. I'd say like the first couple of jobs I had out of college were just like the ones I did in publishing, in pen and paper publishing, or, or like you know, I got. I, I mean, I got out of school and I was like uh, doing graphic design, uh, graphic design freelance, and that was just super toxic, you know. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, you know, uh, I haven't. I've been pretty. And like I said, the last last few jobs I've had have been really lucky. I mean. I would say like anybody that tells anybody that they need to live their work is, is crazy. Uh, I'd say that's, you know, I, I guess, I guess if like, uh, I'll do a, a one liner, one liner, you know? So, <laughs> uh, so uh, not, you know, you're more experienced and better now. What was like the greatest idea you had to date? You know, you could be like a cool visual effects that worked really well in your game or some kind of game design, something like a great idea you had. Oh man. I'm, I'm not, I'm not that guy. I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm, 
Is it, here's the thing. I have a, I have a really hard time with that. Cause just cause I, I know that like, a um, specifically like the job that I do involves everyone. Uh, and so like, I'll, I'll, I'll feel good about something that I'll make like, Oh man, I made this really cool thing. And then, then I just kind of like, you know, uh, <laughs> cause, um, cause I mean like, you know, by the time that something gets to me, uh, or, and including sound, it's like, uh, both of us are kind of like, you know, by the time we get it, it's like so many hands have been on it. I mean, I've pitched, I've pitched stuff before. Sure. Uh, some of it's pretty weird. Uh, and so, uh, go ahead and tell us one. Like, well, what's like a, I mean, like, you know, I've, I've, I've pitched like some stuff where I'm just like, Hey, it'd be really awesome if we tried this thing. And then it's like, that's, uh, no, I don't think so. Or, or like, uh, but again, like, uh, by the time I usually get something that I'm going to work on, I know that so many people have touched it. It's hard for me to kind of like the only, the only thumbprint I can put on it is sort of like the actual asset. Uh, unless like I work with, you know, like I worked with somebody once on like some UI and we just were like, Hey, let's try, let's try out. This is a long time ago. I was like, Oh, let's try, you know, like directional UI with effects. And so I worked with, um, this person and we went back and forth and it just was one of those things where it just worked uh, and it never, it never shipped, you know, I never made game, but we were happy about it. You know, like it's like, you know, how do you, how do we, you know, show off like uh damage based on, on zone and area and, and use effects to kind of work with that and then have it tie into the UI and be procedural and kind of do what it needs to do, you know, and this is my way back before, you know, like people were trying to do like directional sort of hits and things on like FPSs. And so, you know, like that was one of those things where like, it, it wasn't like I came up with an idea and then we pitched it and then we did it. It was more of a, we came up, like, I was like, Hey, wouldn't it be cool if we tried this? And then, uh, the other person was like, Oh yeah, let's do that. And then we did it. And then I was like, Oh yeah, that's cool. And then, the, then they, then like, you know, neither of us were in a position of, of, to, to kind of like actually implement it, but we pitched it and we showed it. And then they're like, ah, it's a little weird. It's like, <laughs> ah. okay. But it was like one of those things where I, I, I get a lot of joy out of working with, with others that are like, and then we both kind of get, we both kind of like bounce ideas off each other. And then that idea becomes better, if that makes any sense. So so I don't really have like a, I mean, I've, I've made, I mean, I've pitched like games and I've pitched other things before, but none of them have seen the light of day. So, <laughs> uh, so it's like, uh, I can't really, you know, show you, give you any reference real that's like saying, Hey, yeah, I did that thing. So besides like the stuff that I've, you know, shipped with, with studios. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, what do you think was like the best investment you've made personally? Like it could be investment of money, time or energy. And how did you decide to make that investment? I'd say like, um, Effects is the the effects position is a job that's always changing and it's always moving into some some direction. I'd say a time investment that I made. There's a couple things. Okay, so one thing was like I I never thought I was going to make uh, Gentleman Fred Effects. Never thought I was going to do it. And um, I'm a very project oriented person, you know. And so I said to myself, okay, I wanna I wanna start. I want to, I want to learn basically unreal was unreal four was coming out and I was like, Hey, I want to learn unreal four in a way that I, you know, not just like, you know, sitting in tutorials and just like going, okay, that's how you move a brush or whatever, you know, like, uh, that's how you make an effect. Like, no. And so I said, I want to make, um, I want, I want to make assets for the marketplace and I want to have very controlled, precise sort of like, I want to make a pack that does X. And then I use those packs to kind of learn unreal instead of it the other way around, which is like, you know, Hey, I learned unreal. And then I made this pack. I was like, okay, I want to learn. Like one of them was like, I want to learn how to use construction, construction scripts to a better advantage than what I have. And so I said, okay, I'm going to make this pack very specific pack. And then, you know, I was like, okay, well, this is how construction packs work or construction scripts work. And then like, you know, build out construction scripts and then, okay, well that that's cool. I learned that check, you know, I'd say like doing like little, little micro projects to kind of learn stuff is like, that's my best way of learning. At least I think that was one thing. And the other one is I sunk a bunch of time into Houdini to kind of learn how to do like sort of procedural things. Cause Avalanche actually had a lot of procedural effects work. And so when I started in a video, I was like, Hey, I want to, I want to learn this better than I know it. <laughs> and they're like, okay, yeah, give it a shot. And so for me, it was sort of an extension a very, very like technical extension, but a, an extension of sort of what I was like, basically I had a primer at Avalanche with sort of like making effects work with, with, um, parameterization and getting data back from the game. And then Houdini is pretty much all about data and, you know, procedural 
anything. So, uh, and plus I really liked their pyro. I thought their pyro was really nice. So I wanted to learn that. So I sunk, I sunk a bit of time into that. Uh, I'd say those are, those are two things that like, you know, I would, I, I, Put personal investment into. Yeah, and and it helps to complement your your main uh, area of expertise as well. So yeah, yeah. So it, yeah, it worked out. Definitely worked out in the end. Uh, well, what have you changed your mind about in the last few years, and why? Like in, in terms of the game industry, has there anything in your mind changed about the game industry in general? Um. Well, I mean, besides what I, I said earlier about like how I'm I'm very happy that. Like for a while, like uh, specifically with effects, it was like kind of like a bunch of alchemists sitting in the corner, like tinkering away <laughs> at, at like little little bits and bobs, trying to you know turn lead and gold. And you know, uh, this is one of those things where like I'm so happy in like the last couple of years that uh, a lot of a lot of effects artists and a lot of companies are opening up about how they do things. Um, if you go to like realtimevfx.com. Uh, some of the guys made a forum there. Uh, it's basically just like a, a big forum with people talking about effects stuff, and it's just great. Uh, that that only that only started like maybe a year or two two go, uh, and so there's a and and like there is a discussion that I was on the other day about like you know I work in a proprietary engine, you know how do I share this? And it's like well the the, the concepts are still good, you know like uh, it's it's not a sometimes the, the implementation of the thing is is a um, gonna be different based on what you're working in like if you work in unreal or unity or source or you know whatever popcorn or fork or whatever whatever it is that you're you're working in it's like you know and you say okay I, um like for me like my big thing lately it's just been like you know getting data back from the game to make my effects work better you know like how do i do that in you know whatever it is that i happen to be working in today uh that's the concept is is important, and the implementation is also important. But it's it's not a gimme. But it's also like, well, this is how I did it. So, you know, is this something that you can use with your game too? Or you know, someone's talking about like you know, um, vector fields and how to how to generate vector fields. And I'm just like, you know, oh, that's great because I was just trying to figure that out myself and the best way of doing it. And you know, so you, so instead of starting at zero, you're starting at like you know anywhere from like one to twenty. You know, based on how how much the person has put out there. But if up to now it's been very difficult to get any sort of information about effects out. And so now we have a forum and, you know, a way to do that. So I think that's great. So that's, that's changed in the last two years. That's huge for me. I'm curious, why did it just start changing? Uh, I guess in the past few years, like why did it just start it now? I have no idea. Uh, I think I know that, me and uh, well, Bill Bill Cladis had the uh, Imbue FX training videos thing. Uh, he had the training video site for a long time, and I helped him out a couple times with that. And then it was like, then Bill uh, started working at Epic, and then I was like, oh, I'm going to go to Nvidia. And so we both kind of can't couldn't do that anymore. And so then, you know, like we're you know we go to G I'd go to GC and like, hey, you know, we'd have these roundtable discussions with like Drew, and he'd say, you know, oh, this is great, this is good information, and he put out something every year and. And I think um, Jason, Jason Kieser, Ke Jason uh, was like, oh, I want to do a forum. Like that sounds great. And so I guess it just sort of been, been building over the course of years, and then now it's just happened. And I think it's great. Yeah, that, that's just awesome. Er everyone's being more open now, and, and uh, new developers like myself could go online and find information that could help us out. That, that's just awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, up to now, I mean, I, and and before all this happened, I would have people like I I would post on a blog and I'd be like, hey, this I tr I did it like this, and they're like, oh, that's really cool. And then I get questions, and then it would kind of you know die off, and then you know then I'd put something else up, and then it, or I'd put out a pack, and then you know people would have questions about that, and, and that's cool. But uh, you know, like, um, oh, and then uh, but you know, like having a central area of, to do that is great. I mean, there and then there's and it seems like other other effects artists are kind of picking up on it too. You know, like you've got Lewis arts who did like, you know, a great, a great link page of just like, this is how I did stuff. And this is, these are other people that did cool stuff. And so it's like, you know, just points of references to go from, to find out more and more about effects. It's just great. It's just good stuff. Yeah. I definitely got linked. Everything you just talked about and now, you know, with the video game industry is booming now. What are you most excited about today? Oh man. Uh, I am excited about lots of stuff. Uh, I think I think that like um, the closer, the more powerful we get, like hardware wise, the more closer we're going to get to that sort of like uh, that want and need of of making movie type effects in games. I, I don't think that's going to happen like 
in the next year or two, but I think it's coming. Uh, I think that like now, now we're at the point where we're able to fake out a lot of stuff really well. And I think that the next couple of years, we're going to basically, I feel that effects artists are going to hone that down. You know, like say like, you know, um, like, uh, I know that there are people out there that want to make, you know, like real time volumetric explosions and it does exist. You can do that. It is, uh, very expensive, prohibitively expensive, but, uh, you know, it's like it, it can be done. Uh, can you use that in like a VR environment? Maybe. Just depends on what you're, where you're spending your money on your scene. But like, I think that we're the, the more powerful hardware gets, the closer we're going to get to sort of real time, crazy movie stuff. Unfor- unfortunately, that means that effects artists have to, you know, bring their A game. Yeah. So, <laughs> definitely. Uh, but uh, I think I think that like there's that there's um, I think that's the big thing for me. It's like we're getting closer and closer to this idea of you know, getting away from fakery and, and actually being able to render it out uh, in real time. But that's not, like I said, I don't think it's going to come for a while. And I think now I think people are just going to be, and, and I could, I'm sure that, like I said, my, <laughs> some people that I work with could argue with me on this one, but I think that now we're going to be like saying, okay, well, how now, now that we can kind of fake you out with like, you know, flip books and with really nice shaders and materials, it's like, how, how far can we push that before, you know, we're, we're at the point where we're like, okay, we can't really do much more, you know? So, I mean, if you look, if you look back over the last, like, sort of, I'm not even, not even the last five years, I mean, our, our, our rendering has become really, really great because uh, we're, you know, offsetting the GPU where, you know, like we're, we're using, we're using our, our resources much better. Uh, but then, you know, it's one of those things where like, basically it's like every time someone asks me to do something, it's like, make a movie, make, make this like this movie, you know? And I'm like, oh God, you know, or, <laughs> Or, yeah, and then for me, it's like, okay, well, how do I fake that, or how do I, how do I, how do I fool you into thinking you're thinking you're seeing what you want? You know, uh, that's like sort of the job is to be like a stage magician. You know, like you're like, hey, look over here, and it's like, okay, it's really happening over here, but look over here. You know, so there's a lot of that, and I think that the more like right now we're just going to be like again honing that down, and then eventually we're going to get to the point where we're going to be actually, you know, doing real, real sort of crazy stuff in real time. I mean, even if you look at like, uh, you look at what like Rogue One did with their real time sort of rendering on, on set where they're, you know, they'll have like a, an actor doing, you know, like their, their scene. And then he looks down and he sees like his, his robot in real life or not in real time, like doing that, doing that back, like doing his, his scene back to him. And you're just like, holy crap, you know, like, okay, that's really cool. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff. VR is cool too. I, I, I just, uh, I don't know as much about it, but. I, th- I think it's cool. <laughs> what, what like uh, is there a particular game that you think does a great job with visual effects? Is like is something that we could use as a blueprint? Oh man, okay. Uh, let's see. I'm looking back at my list of games that I've been playing lately. I think that it, that generally like anything that there's a handful of games that I just played recently that I just loved. Um, but not recently, but like some of them are recent. I think that the effects for like anything that that is in the Uncharted's are great. Yeah. I think I think that like um I love the the uh, sort of the superpower effects in like uh Infamous the Infamous is Infami. I think that like um I really liked Horizon the Horizon envi- or Zero Dawn environments were just gorgeous and the, their whole their whole like sort of their whole game was just really well made. Uh I love fighters. I love fighting games. I, I, I guilty pleasure. Uh, I think that most effects in fighting games are just re- absurd, but I love them. <laughs> uh, I think that, you know, I think that those are like sort of like my my benchmarks right now. Like uh, I do, I tend to steer towards. I, I tend to like do more realistic stuff than not, which is why I love stylized effects because uh, I think that stylized effects have great motion and, and feeling. So I've, I'm always trying to look at like you know if I look at like. Um, like League of Legends effects or something, those are always really great, but they're not realistic at all. But their 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 feeling and timing are great, you know. I think uh, so. If like I can take like that sort of feeling and make it look more more or less realistic, I think that's really fun. Uh, I thought that the effects in Titanfall too were really cool. <laughs> I, I had a really good time with those. Um, the uh, I think the stuff that's coming out of Paragon is really great, just because I think it's like really pushing some stuff. Those are the ones I'm thinking off the top of my head. So, so many great games. Like, what, what's your favorite current game right now that you're playing? Oh man, I just finished Persona Five. I had such a good time with that thing. 
Oh, how long did it take for you to beat that game? I, I wonder. Oh man, um, I think it the first playthrough was uh, ninety hours. First playthrough, ninety hours. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 like I said, guilty pleasure. Uh, <laughs> and I did that like over lunches, like an hour at a time. It, or actually, no, that's not true. I did some weekends too, but I didn't. I'm not. I'm not a binge gamer because my wife would kill me. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think it took like it was like eighty. 89 yeah it was like about 90 hours i think and then i had then i uh then i was like okay i need to not play a, a jrpg for a while <laughs> i need to i need to put this down but it's that's one of those games where like the whole package was really cool the effects are good the 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 ui is amazing the the style of it's great if you can you know if you can get past you know like uh like I, I, I like uh, I like anime, so it's like I really like that style. Like some people aren't really into that sort of style, so I'm like, okay. Like I, you know, I really like Guilty Gear. Guilty Gear is really cool, but you know, yeah, I just finished playing Persona Five, uh, and I'm and I'm I started playing um, Pyre, uh, and then I stopped. I was like, okay, I need to I need to make something for a while, you know? so, <laughs> so I, I had to step back. So oh man, I definitely gotta check out Persona Five. I heard so many great things about it, so. When I, whenever I have time, I definitely need to check it out. Uh, awesome. The show isn't over yet, Game Devs. We have reached a crunch time. The phase that is dreaded, but we are here to overcome it. So basically, Fred, I would ask you quick questions. and You'll be giving us a ton of valuable information in return. Are you ready to crush it and release the show? Uh, Sure. <laughs> uh, what was holding you back from joining the game industry? Uh, my, own, my own sort of... Uh me i was holding me back i i didn't think i could i didn't think i could do it and then i just tried and, and i just like kind of kept kept pounding on it and then I, then I did it there you go man like people do get fearful or they just fear the unknown but you just gotta keep trying to keep doing it and you you find something along the way hopefully yeah totally uh what's a personal habit that contributes to your success uh i'm really organized and I, I make lots of lists and I, I execute those lists. <laughs> Is there like a, a software or program you use to be organized? It depends. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll use, um, I use post-it notes. I use, uh, I use, I use pieces of paper. Uh, <laughs> they don't, they, they don't crash. Not really. I, I use a lot of, I use a lot of paper. Sometimes I'll use like, um, what the hell's the name of that thing? I, I, it's sad enough that I forgot the name of it, but just, just to say like, you know, Lists of paper, pens and paper. No, no software. Let's just do no software for now. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that's actually a much better way because you're, you're literally writing, you know, your ideas down. And it, to me, when you write things down personally with your hands, you just remember it better. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. What's the best advice you've ever received? That's a stumper because I've got a lot of advice. When I was, uh, this is not an effects thing. When I, when I was doing art stuff, they were the, one of the people that I, I eventually worked for. Just basically told me to persist. I I had very thin skin when I was in school, uh, as far as like uh, going out and showing like my work, uh, and I had a lot of work to do. And I think that they say you know you just have to keep you have, if you really want this, you have to keep trying. I think that was one one of the. I mean, I know it sounds cliche as hell, but I mean like it's one of the best things someone ever told me because I mean I was I'm I'm also an incredibly stubborn person, but I mean like on top of it, it was like. You know, like having that, having somebody that I respected sort of acknowledge that was really great. Yeah, that's awesome. You, because the game industry or joining the game industry in general is just hard. Yeah, it's 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 a bit rough. Yeah. <laughs> so you gotta stay persistent. Just keep building that portfolio, and, and you you show something that you could do. You show people what you could do. Uh, how has a failure set you up for a later success? Um, I think like uh, every every time I've failed, it's been like something where. I, uh, I'm not good. I'm not good at failing, uh, but I fail a lot. And I, I, th I need to be clear on this as far as like failure, isn't like bad to me anymore. I think that like, if I'm trying to work through something like with, I'm trying to work through something, it's like, I'm going to, I'm going to fail a lot. I think that, that there's like this, um, idea where you do it right the first time and that's never, that's never going to happen. Uh, and so I think that like, Every time I failed, it's been a, it's definitely been some kind of a, a learning experience. Even if it's like really small or incremental, it's definitely built towards everything that I've failed at. I've kind of built, used that to kind of build towards something bigger. I don't know how else to say that. Yeah, you, you didn't let your failure uh, put you down. You learned from it and you improved later on. Like you just kept going. Yeah, yeah, and and I think that like um, 
I think that like you have to be okay with like you know screwing up and making it making a mistake and failing and 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 as as long as you're as long as you kind of keep keep like uh keep those tabs in it's like okay well i i like i didn't learn how to do this thing and i screwed this thing up and i burned this much time which is usually the big thing uh but i figured out how to do x and that's something that i can definitely use later you know no you're right you you learn from your mistakes and you you're saving so much time when you uh and make sure you know when you make your next game, you don't make the same mistake. So you save yeah, exactly. time. So, uh, what resources should we game devs use? I think that there's, um, I think there's a lot. Uh, I think that if you're doing effects, you should definitely be on realtimevfx.com. Uh, I think that you know there's a lot of information there that you can use. You know, you should be, you should definitely put your work out there as much as possible if you're trying to develop yourself uh, and your portfolio. Um, you might think that you're the best thing ever. Uh, and you've done this awesome thing and you've made this great magic something and it does everything you think it does. And then like uh, the biggest issue with art is that the closer you get to it, the harder it is to be critical of it. Uh, so the more the more eyes that you can get on it that are not your friends, the better <laughs> the better <laughs> off that you are. So I'd say like, you know, like I said, real time VFX dot com. Definitely go there. Um, as far as like other things you should use. I think that, you know, uh, if you're making effects, you should definitely reference as much as you can get, get video, uh, still is good, but video is better, especially if you're trying to make something uh, magical, uh, but you still, you know, like, like, let's say you want to make a, like an ice effect or something and you want to, uh, you're like, Oh, I can, I know what ice is like. And then you look on, and then you build something like, Oh, that doesn't look right. And then you look online and you know, you see that, you know, maybe the way that ice, you know, forms itself and, and like, a, um, you know, sort of a, a high speed is, is what you wanted to do. But then like what you have is there. So you have a reference and then you can say, look back on it and use that to build something better. I'd say get the reference first. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, yeah any sort of like referencing is great. As far as software, it just depends on what you want to do <laughs> and how you want to get there. <laughs> uh, you know, you got your Photoshop, you got your After Effects, you got your, you know, Houdini, Max, Maya, uh, Unreal, Unity, Shader Tool. <laughs> there's there's tons of stuff out there. What did you use in particular? I, I'm right now, I've, uh, well, Avalanche was um, proprietary. Uh, I use, okay, I use Houdini, Max, Maya, uh, Photoshop, After Effects. Uh, I do all my video stuff in Camtasia. Generally, I'm using right now. I'm in Unreal, uh, so I'm I'm in Unreal a lot. As far as like training resources, uh, I'd say um, there's a ton of free stuff out there, uh, varying levels of 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 awesome. I'd say go to uh, luosarts.com for the links that he has there. Because if you want to if you want a shortcut to find kind of harder to find links, go there. I like Plural Sight, although it, you have to pay for it. Uh, but generally, you can pr- generally you can find generally find stuff for free. First, I'm talking myself into a corner. Uh, <laughs> no, you already gave us a ton of resources. So I'm definitely gonna find those and, and link those up for sure. So yeah, I really appreciate that. This next question is a bit of a doozy, so take your time if you need to. Imagine you woke up the next morning in a brand new world and you knew no one. You still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have today. Your food and shelter is taken care of and you have a laptop. What would you do step by step on the path to become a great visual artist? Wow. Okay. Um, first thing I would do is I would look up, uh, if I wanted to be an effects artist, say, uh, let's say we're talking about effects specifically, I would look up, uh, like sort of classic, uh, visual effect, uh, sorry, classic animation, like, uh, Anything, anything like with magic, uh, there's, um, uh, there's an elemental magic book that a Disney guy put out. That would be something I would look at first. Uh, I would dig it. I would basically look up all the things that made me want to do that job, made me want to be an effects person. And then after that, I would turn in into basically I'd, I'd probably start looking at like how to draw and start drawing on, on the, on the laptop course uh (laughs) and then uh like basically get my basics down work on my timing and then start you know sort of building basic effects not even worrying about like sort of software or 
or like, you know, rendering flip books or anything like that. So then you get your, the then I would build like my baseline and let's say it was like, you know, a magic spell that was uh, a burst that turned into a, a shield or something, you know, like let's say it's that. And then after that, I would say, okay, I built this first thing. I would send it out to forums and have people pound on it and look at it and say, Hey, this is great. Or this is horrible. <laughs> and this is what, this is what you need. This is what you don't need. Then after that, I would start looking at like, you know, okay, now I've got my baseline. Uh, and then I would start building like, you know, let's say someone said, okay, you need some, you need some, this is an ice spell. Let's say you need some, some uh, mist in there. It's like, okay, well, how would I make that mist? Okay. Would I do it with a flip book? Would I do it with, you know, shading? Would I do it with that? Then it turns into, okay, well, let's say I do it with shading. Then I'd pick up basics of shading and look at how shading works. And then, <laughs> you know, like slowly build up something so that you have a baseline and then you're always going back to that base until you're finished, quote unquote, finished. Now, the, the danger is that you never know when you're finished. So uh, you have to like have a you have to have enough like sort of discipline to step back and say, OK, this one's done. Let's start something else. Uh, and that's that's actually really hard because um, you can kind of work something to death. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes that makes total sense. So so basically you you find the passion you're trying to do uh, visual arts for. And then mm-hmm. you start off slow with the basics. And once you build something, you uh, put it online to get feedback. And based on the feedback, you make changes, you make it better. And in the end, you do not want to, uh, I guess, fall in love with the project too much or be <laughs> too attached, I guess. So you don't like keep working on it over and over again. Well, I think I think that always going back and improving on what you're working on is important because every time you do something, you're going to learn something. Yeah, you know. Uh, but there is that point where you can work something to death, and so you know there there is a point where you're like, okay, you kind of have to let it go. Um, unfortunately, there is a there's a culture of people that are like, you know, like when you release a video game and it's not done, that's like the same problem. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, like, me. oh man, this isn't done. I got a t- two hour day one patch. It's like, well. Right. But, you know, like it, there is that point where, you know, you have to kind of say, OK, I think this is finished now. That's kind of hard to, to get to, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I think and I guess in some cases like that, you have to really uh, communicate with your audience to let them know, you know, what's up with your game? What, what's the progress and stuff like that? Awesome, Fred. Uh, we have reached the end. Go ahead and give us a parting piece of guidance and how we can connect with you. And then we'll say goodbye. If you ever want to get a hold of me, go to my Twitter Uh that's twitter.com slash gentleman fred effects or go to gentleman fred effects.tumblr.com and I'll have a link to my email if you ever want to talk to me about effects stuff or for Evan, anything like that. And, and, and what's a, a party piece of guidance you want to leave us with? Oh, uh, I think I've kind of said it like a ton of time here. Um, if you ever, if you do want to get into games and get into effects, um, pick, pick, you know, like find something that you want to do and then don't, don't stop. Just keep doing it until you can until you you know find a way to get there then you go pick something and just keep doing it uh fred be persistent 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 for sure persistence uh fred it's been a pleasure and thank you so much for sharing your journey with us and for that we are truly grateful and we will catch you next time thanks have a good day thank you game notes for listening and remember that knowledge is only potential power execution is the game go check out my website at gamedovloadout.com for all the show notes that includes all the resources we just talked about today listen to more inspiring stories and to help the show grow by subscribing to the podcast you will get new weekly episodes every monday and in the next episode i interview deborah henderson at the microsoft studios user research and we talk about how to effectively test games so until then keep on making great games and i will catch you on the next episode bye